Mm. Well, yeah, we're breaking a, a, one of the rules that is told to you the day you become a made guy. You know, you never turn on the family. You, you have to uh, come whenever the family calls for you. They come first. No drugs. Obviously, Omerta, no talking to the law. And no messing around with other people's wives or girlfriends. Mm. You know? So I learned that rule that day, but as the years went on, I also learned every one of those rules is broken. It's a facade. Wow. Everyone. There were so many guys dealing drugs, uh, so many guys dealing with the feds. My boss himself was a 30-year informant. You know, that's like the coup de grace, at the end of the story of my life, to find out that he was, you know, an yeah. informant for 30 years. That's interesting. I had a yeah. guy I had a guy on here. I think the only other guy that I've had on the show who was, uh, like, previous mafia was uh, John A. Light. Yeah, Johnny, I know. And he was saying yeah. the same thing, basically. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's no... Yeah. Typically, they wouldn't let somebody else do it. If it came down to, and I'll tell you a story, where I had to be killed, my own family would do it. They weren't allowed the Gambinos to do it. And there's a reason. They figured they'll torture me, they'll make it real hard. You want them away? We'll get rid of them. We had a friend of ours, Tony Frezza, who used to uh, like to go out and drink, and when he did coke, he got a little crazy, and he liked the coke. So he's in Sammy's club called Tally's, and he winds up getting out of hand, acting crazy, whatever, the owner, Joey, Joey D'Angelo was his name, tells him he's got to leave. And he's a good fella. Tony wasn't a wise guy. So he doesn't go. So now a couple of the guys bounces. They physically take him out. He goes home, gets his gun, comes back, and kills the good fella. That's a mortal sin. Can't even raise your hands to a good fella. So he... Winds up, Scappy tells him, get out of town. He goes down, comes down to Florida. I might have been in this area, Tampa. Really? <laughs> so he comes down to Florida. Yeah, I think it was Tampa. It's funny. And he's trying to sort this out. So he goes to have the meeting with the Gambino family. And I'll never forget this either. We know he's at the meeting, and we're waiting for him to come back. We all like Tony. He's one of us. He's a tough guy. He's good. You know, we all liked him. He comes walking in, Scappy. He used to walk in your bouncing his keys in his hand. So we heard him come in. And he always said, gentlemen. He said, that's what he did. He says, gentlemen. And we're all waiting. He says, I got good news and I got bad news. He says, the bad news is Tony's got to go. The good news is we get to do it. How chilling is that? That was the good news. But I understood. They would have probably tortured him for what he did to Joey D'Angelo. <sighs> So, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and I was on the outskirts of that, one of my early hits. Uh, Were you there for that? Yeah, I, was, I wasn't at the actual shooting, but I was there. Uh, I, I actually picked Tony up with Mario at the airport and drove him to where uh, Greg Jr. was waiting for him. Did he know that he was about to be executed? No. He thought, as a matter of fact, we made a stop, and Mario ran in and bought Coke. Really? So he thought we everybody was going to go party, and I at that time I didn't do a lot, a lot of, you know, yeah. drugs or anything. I I drank a little bit, but yeah. uh, anyway, uh, and the hole was already dug in in the in the woods behind Gregory's house. God, and what? That, somebody flipped years later and 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 told where the body was. Why wouldn't they just be like like if they really like loved this guy like a brother? Why wouldn't you just be like, yo, go to the Bahamas, don't come back? That's or, what that's what I said I would have done. Uh, again, it's a difference, but a guy like Scappy, who lives by the rules of Cosa Nostra, he probably couldn't live with himself. He says if it was the other way around, if they hurt one of our good fellas, you know, we'd want the same satisfaction. Right. So there are guys at a certain level who live this life that know the rules, and they just taking it to the grave with them, you know. Uh, Plus, I guess you have to always be have that concern in the back of your mind. If this guy does come back, then we're if, really yeah, fucked. Then there's a war. Then there's a war. And then they could ask for two guys. And then Scappy's life could, yeah. you lied to us. You know? Right. So, yeah. Uh, and there were others. I mean, Bucky uh, was a friend of ours that, but well, not a good fellow so when I say that, but he was our friend uh, that got into the drug business. And he was supposed to, he was told to stop. 
And this is why it's hypocritical, because just five, six years later, we were the biggest drug crew in Brooklyn. And I'll tell you how that happened in a minute. Uh, but Bucky got killed for dabbling in, 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 in the drug business. And, uh, uh, and he was one of us. But again, it was a rule. You're not supposed to be dealing drugs. Did, could you guys find a more humane way to like kill your own? Fr I mean, these guys are kind of like your friends. I mean, did you just always shoot them, or was there a better way to no, do it? No, they, 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 the only thing I ever knew was a gun. Yeah. Uh, I never heard of guys with knives, uh, never heard of poison. The only bombing I heard of was when they tried to bomb John Gotti, and they got uh, uh, Frankie DeChico instead, who was on the Paul Castellano hit. And it was another family, mm. the the Chins family, and some of the other families never sanctioned that hit that John Gotti did on Castellano. You can't kill a boss. It's a rule. You just can't do it. Because if that starts happening, uh, John's own counsel, yeah, told him, what you did, there's a bullet waiting for you now. You broke a rule. Yeah. And also, who's going to want to be the boss if you could just start whacking bosses to take over? Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't hear about it that much. It's very rare. Mm -hmm. And it's even more rare to kill a, 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 a consulier because a consulier is, his position is to save lives. Right. And like, like that night with me, if they, well, if it was our family, this was two different families. So, but if it was. He, the consulier, he's like the lawyer, the negotiator. The yeah, guy, the, but he's. The mediator. He, he's not. He's liked. And respected by all the captains and all the good fellas. Okay. Okay. So if he calls you to a meeting at two in the morning, you go and you have no, you have all the confidence in the world. You're not getting killed. And again, that's a, a sacred rule of the life. So if you really believe in the life and the and and he calls you, you go. You know, that slipped over the years too because guys in that position were shouldn't have been in the position. They were cold blooded killers. You know, it's typically a position where guy did his work, made his bones over the years. He's well-liked. He's smart. He can, almost like you said, the movies make it like a lawyer, like Tom Hagen in The Godfather. Uh, but it's a, as a matter of fact, Greg told me that's the best position in the family because mm -hmm. you're untouchable and it's a lifetime assignment. Mm -hmm. They can never break you. If you're a captain, they could demote you. Mm -hmm. If you're the underboss, he could demote you. If you're a consul, yeah, it's for life. And that's the other reason it's such a, a, a trusted position, you know?